aren't you glad I'm going to be showing you these books? <music> Welcome, come on in. My name is Aoife and today I am taking you through all of the orange covered books that are on my shelves, whether I've read them already or whether they're books that I'm about to read. I've done this before with a couple of other colours that are on my shelves. I think I've done it with pink and with yellow and with blue, but let's take a look at the orange books today. There is quite a big pile, so let's get straight into it. First one up is Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. I have had this with a while now and I keep meaning to pick it up but also I'm a little bit put off it because some people that I've seen that have read it haven't really loved it. It's been kind of middle of the road for them. In this book, you're following Ava, who leaves Ireland when she's about 22 and goes to Hong Kong teaching English. That is something that has also happened to me. I've also left Ireland for another country, haven't gone there to teach English, but I am living in a different country to where I grew up. So that is something that I feel like is going to connect me to Ava. But I also feel like there's a lot of kind of interpersonal relationships that are brought into this book and I don't really know how they're handled, what they look like, but I am slightly intrigued to see how this book will go. Next one up is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I've read the arc of this already and I absolutely loved it so I knew that I wanted a physical copy for my bookshelves. In this book you're following Alex and Poppy who have been best friends for about 10 years. They met in college and they go on holidays together every year because due to their careers and where they're living they don't really get to catch up very often. About two years before the action of this book starts Poppy and Alex have had a massive falling out and they haven't spoken to each other since. Poppy is a travel writer and she has sent an assignment to Palm Springs in California which coincidentally is where one of Alex's brothers is getting married. So they decide to have like a one last ditch attempt at a holiday together and see how it's going to pan out for them. Next up is Dial A for Andes by Jesse Sutuno. I've seen this book on Twitter quite a lot and I've seen it here on booktube quite a lot and I have been so intrigued by what happens in it. In this book you're following Medi, whose aunts have set her up on a blind date with somebody but during the date her date passes away. And then there's a whole thing about how to hide the body and also because Medi's family run a wedding business and there is a huge wedding ceremony happening right now, there's all that kind of chaos that's brought into the mix as well. I am so excited to see what happens in this book. Next up is Ayoade on Ayoade by Richard Ayoade. It's kind of an interview of Richard interviewing Richard, but set out in film scripts. And I am so excited to read this. I have already read, well, listened to Ayoade on Top, which is kind of like his deep dive into a film called Over the Top, which stars Gwyneth Paltrow as a flight attendant. And I genuinely loved that one. Richard Ayoade's humour is something that I really love. I love his kind of deadpan delivery and it's something that I am very highly anticipating from this book. Next up is a classic, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I have never read this. I have seen countless adaptations or kind of modernizations of Pride and Prejudice. Quite a lot of the knowledge that I have of the story of Pride and Prejudice comes from a sketch show put together of like John Mulaney quotes that are fitting into the 2005 adaptation film. I am really intrigued to see what the actual story is about. I've had this one on my shelf for ages, but I know that Shannon and Charlotte's book club, the I Should Have Read That book club, is going to read this in September, so I am probably going to hold off on it until then, but I can't wait to pick it up. Next one up is Clean by Juno Dawson. This is the first in the kind of London trilogy where all of the characters don't really intertwine, but they all live in the kind of same London that Juno has put together. So here you're following Lexi, who is about 17 years old and she has some massive problems with drug addiction, alcohol addiction, drug abuse and alcohol abuse. So she is sent off to rehab to basically get herself clean. And you're following what Lexi's recovery is like, the people that she meets while she's in this kind of teen rehabilitation centre. I really loved that it was so hard hitting and that Juno you know, definitely was not afraid to kind of confront the dangers and the difficulties of drug addiction and of drug abuse and of trying to get yourself off these things. Next up is another classic, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I have read this maybe two or three times already and I kind of keep going back to it so often. This one is pretty chunky because it is both Little Women and Good Wives. You can often just get Little Women and Good Wives separately but I have specifically gone looking out for any copies of it that I look for. I always look to see if Good Wives is also included in it. This is the story of the four March sisters, Meg, Joe, Beth and Amy and their mother and their father who is fighting in the Civil War. He's kind of more of a chaplain role, 
but they're separated from their father for quite a lot of the book and you go through quite a lot of kind of societal change and personal changes of the girls throughout the book and it's such a great read. Next up is a YA debut, which is The Falling in Love Montage by Kira Smith. This came out kind of late last year and I have to admit I absolutely fell in love with it. So in this book you are following Saoirse who has just finished her school exams and she's waiting for her results so that she can head off to college. But it spans the summer after her exams and waiting for that little period. Saoirse isn't really a big believer in love stories and in romance. But a new girl called Ruby moves to the area. She's cousins to one of Saoirse's friends. And Ruby kind of sets out to try and take away some of the cynicism that Ruby has got and introduce her to the world of love stories and big romantic gestures. And all together, they decide to have a summer of romantic tropes and romantic gestures and a falling in love montage. Something that I absolutely adore about this book as well, by the way, is that it has a little selection of romantic comedies that you can watch in the back of it. And they're all separated into like kind of tropes that you would really know among stories. So like second chance romances or friends to lovers or that they hated each other and then they got back together. I am working my way kind of slowly through the films list and I absolutely have loved the ones that I've seen so far. Next one up is a bit of a Marmite book. You either love this one or you hate it and it's Normal People by Sally Rooney. I fall into the first category. I don't particularly love it, it's not one of my favourite books but I really enjoyed reading this story. You're following Connell and Marianne who are leaving their students in Ireland in 2011 and that was something that instantly connected me to this book because I also did my leaving cert in 2011 which is the final school exams when you're a student in Ireland. I really enjoyed the story itself, I loved watching their kind of hidden escapades together and all of the kind of stories and adventures that they went on throughout their time in school and how it all flipped on its head when they were in college and Connell wasn't the popular guy anymore and didn't really know how to deal with that. It's definitely something that I think was really well handled in this book. What I will say however is that there are no quotation marks across the entire book so if that's something that you struggle with just know about it before you go in. The final book that I'm going to show you is another YA book and it's Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. This was Elizabeth Acevedo's first book that I read. It's her most recent one as far as I'm aware and it's written completely in verse. You're following two girls, Yahira and Camino. Camino lives in the Dominican Republic and Yahira lives in New York. They're sisters, they have the same father, but they don't know that. Their dad spends some time in New York with Yahira and then over the summer he will fly to the Dominican Republic and spend some time with Camino and her family and her relations. While he's on the way to the Dominican Republic one day, the flight that he is on crashes and everybody on board is killed. And this is when Yahira and Camino discover each other and start to kind of form a little relationship and discover the huge disparities between the worlds that they have been brought up in and the worlds that they're used to. I absolutely adored this book, but something that makes it a little bit more poignant is that it is somewhat based on a true story. In November of 2001, there was a plane that left New York to bound for the Dominican Republic, which crashed and everybody on board sadly lost their lives. So knowing that it's based somewhat on a true story and potentially could have happened makes this book a whole lot more poignant. So those are all of the books with orange covers that I have got either on my TBR or that I've already read. What are the books on this list that you've really enjoyed or which one should I start out with? Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have new videos up every week. Now, get on out of here.